everyday witches emerge from the shadows of secrecy. Broom closets are flinging open and witches are taking flight. Whether you are hiding in your cozy closet or flying with pride, stay for a spell as witch casting with Theodora Pendragon and her guests share magical moments, stir the cauldron and debunk misinformation and misconceptions about paganism, witches and our wonderful world of magic. Today we have Daniel Jackson as our guest, and he is the author of The New Beginning. Go ahead, Daniel, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your book. Well, uh, my name is Daniel Jackson. I go by Spirit Medium Daniel. I've been a medium for uh, almost about six years now. My book, uh, entitled Daniel Jackson, uh, The New Beginning, my, My Awakening as a Spirit Medium, is a story about me, about how everything happened to me and for me. It goes through my life chronologically of the the, the events that happened throughout my life coming up to the point of me actually becoming a medium. I didn't know I was a medium, but I had seen spirits so so much my entire life. It just became regular life for me. I, I was seeing so much that it was, uh, I just figured everybody was seeing that. I mean, especially when I was younger, but uh, the, the older I got, when I would tell some people stories about what happened to me throughout my life, they would just look at me in awe because they don't always experience that. The point behind the book with everything that's in this story, the background of it is if you're going through this type of thing, you really need to f- search out and find your people. Don't try to feel like you need to go through this by yourself because there are many people out there who do experience these things. They don't always talk about it, but if you bring it up around people, you're you're eventually going to hear from someone else too as well. They've they've had these types of instances. But I, although I have shared that with some people throughout my life, but people would say they would see here see like this little shadow here and there and stuff like that, but never to the extent of the types of things that I have seen. And still see uh, to this day as um, that would probably scare the crap out of people. But I am protected uh, from these negative energies, so I don't have to worry about that. I can walk into any haunted house or so-called haunted house on the face of the earth and nothing can absolutely touch me. Uh, But that's me. I don't recommend that for anyone nor do I recommend that for anyone anyway. I tell people don't bother going to the haunted walks and the haunted houses and all that stuff because a lot of these negative energies hang out there just waiting for you to walk in. And maybe you're one of those people who's having a bad day or a bad month or even a bad year. You know, you walk in and, oh, I spilled my coffee today five times, you know, and now I'm feeling horrible about my day. Well, you know what? If I spill my coffee, I clean it up and I go get another coffee. Who cares, right? I mean, let it go. But if you're letting this bother you so much, you walk into one of these places, these negative energies are are just looking for that because they they will prey on those who are having self-esteem issues or they're having depression issues or even drug and alcohol problems. These people who are already feeling down and they will try to attach themselves to you, you walk away out of that house feeling all scared and all that negative energy you're putting out from your fear. And now you're going home with something you don't need to have with you. So. I mean, same thing where I tell people don't mess with Ouija boards, you know. What people don't understand about a Ouija board is, one, it was created in order to to bring evil into this world. And two, if you're having that Ouija board in your home and you invite 10 people over and then there's somebody else there who who does all the voodoo voodoo stuff and they invite these things in – they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're bringing into this world. But the biggest problem is, is because you, it's your Ouija board and you brought it and it's your, your house. You get stuck with the negative energy, not the people who, who came into your house and tried this thing. But yeah, my, my book is about all these types of things that I have experienced throughout my life. But again, if you're having these types of things go on in your life, reach out and find someone. There's seven and a half billion of us. 
there's someone else out there who has gone through the same type of thing that you're going through. So go out and try to find your people. But that's anything in your life. Go out and find your people. And you don't need to be or feel that you're alone in this world because no one's alone in this world. I mean, there's seven and a half billion of us. If we weren't meant to be together, then there would only be one of us. When I was turning 50, that's when I started seeing some really crazy things come, coming on uh, around me. And it was happening on a, such a frequent basis that uh, I knew at that point that I couldn't figure it out myself. My wife and I couldn't figure it out. So we, we sought out help for that. So one of the people I met who was another medium who told me I had a big decision to make to either move forward with it or not. When I started to move forward with it, everything did change for me. And uh, at first I stopped seeing all the, the, the crazy, scary stuff, but that has since come back, you know, but I don't let it bother me. Are you saying that you learned how to get more control over the negative spirits? Well, I have control over it because I am protected from, from all negative energies. So spirit does come up to me all the time. They touch me, pinch me, poke me uh, all over my body. Uh, because they are trying to figure out what I am. Because when spirit sees you, they see your body frame, and they also see your light inside of you. So they don't see us fully. They just see through us because the physical world is nothing to them. But they do see our light inside of us. Well, some people have a light that's brighter than others. And what I mean by that is you wake up out of your body. You're going to Look down, see your body, go, oh, I guess I don't need that anymore. You're going to take a step to the left. You're going to look to the right, and there's a light that's going to turn on for you. Everyone gets a personal light, everyone. And whether you go in or not is up to you. It's a choice. You're not asking for forgiveness from God or any of that other bull crap that they want to tell you because that's brought to you by the te people who want to tell you how to live your life the, the way they want you to live it and give them 10%. <laughs> How did they know about 10% back then? Because they were kings and queens. That's who wrote that that book. You know, they call it the Bible. I call it the Babel because that's what it is. It's a babbling bunch of bullshit. <laughs> but you're going to see that light and you're either going to walk in or you're not. You walk in, you go home to what we would call heaven, but it's just another place. Or you don't walk in, you remain here as an earthbound spirit. But beyond that light, when if you walk in or not, it'll turn off. There's always another light that shines all the time. We call this the light in the heaven. But that light being that it's here in a physical world is actually another soul that is in a physical body. When you pass away, you'll, you'll get up out of your body. You'll go back home because you've been here. Let me ask. Uh, you're on number 27. So you've had 26 other lifetimes. You've gone home. When, when you, would, you would possibly come back because, well, you've been here 27 times, so you, you've had to come back. We come back because we don't fulfill our purpose. It's not punishment or anything like that. We're just here to, to learn lessons and fulfill a purpose. That's what we're here for. But this other light that shines all the time, it shines for a couple of reasons. One, so all spirit can see it, but not just spirit who are in spirit. All those who are inside bodies as well, they are attracted to it. They as some people are attracted, more attracted to other people because their energy is so much stronger and they, they feel drawn to those certain people. Well, this light shines all the time so that all spirit can see it like a beacon of light. But not only do they see it, because it's in a physical body, they can hear it as well whenever it's talking. Because when, when people are around spirit, because there are so many spirits, as many spirits that cross over into the light, there's that many that don't. And they hear us as people. But after a while, it, because there's seven and a half billion of us, it sounds like static to them. They can tune that out. But this one particular light, the soul, they cannot tune it out because they have to know where to go. They can see that light off in the distance. They can hear the voice coming from it. It is a beacon for them to, to find where to go to cross over, if they want to cross over or not. So not everyone does, but they, it has to be. Shining has to be heard all the time so that the spirit can know where to go at all times. And they can cross over any time that they want to. They just, you know, they don't always know that. So when they, when they come up to that, that light, all they see is the light. Even though it is in a physical body, they can't see the physical body itself because this light is so bright. That body expires and then the soul leaves 
and then another one is, is born right at the same time as this other one dies and it just goes into the other one. You can't go to school. You can't get a degree. You can't take a class and become a medium. You either have this or you don't. A few minutes ago, you mentioned that you could see things and you thought everybody could see the spirits. When did that start happening for you? As far as I can remember back when, when I was three years old. Did you tell anybody that? Yeah, my, my mom and dad and I and my two brothers and sister, we grew up in a town in New Jersey. And uh, in that town, we were right across the river from Philadelphia. So in that town, there was a battlefield where the Hessians fought. My, my sister was just telling me a couple of months ago that they did a big dig over there. And they found hundreds and hundreds of bodies all buried there because there was that's where they fought a war there. I mean, but. You got to figure, yeah, because they're not going to bury one body at a time. So they buried a whole bunch of them on a mass grave. But there was a little hospital on the, on that ground as well. There's a park there. And I remember we used to go there all the time. We called it the monument because they had this big monument there. And people would say they would see spirit there all the time. But we never really saw any. But, I mean, we saw them in our homes. We saw it in my house, uh, the people next door to us, people down the street from us. So much so that like there was a time when my sister was getting ready for school one morning and I walked into the bathroom and my mom was helping her and they turned around to look in this mirror that was on a door, a full length mirror. And when they did, there was another woman standing in the mirror with a, with a colonial outfit on. There was a time when my brothers and I were downstairs watching TV and my sister's room was two flights up. And these things lived in my sister's room. We knew it was two men and a woman. We were watching TV, and then my sister's record player turned on. Now, this is back in the 70s when you had to put a record on, and you flipped the switch, you would drop it down. That wasn't the crazy part. The crazy was it was switching records. So I was taking a record off and put another one on. So, But this happened on a, on a regular basis. There was a time when my parents and I moved out. My brother moved into the house. He had some friends come over to the house, and they were knocking on the door and they're looking in the picture window and they see people walking around the house and nobody's answering. So my friends, my brother's friend calls him up on the phone and says, hey, you got to come to the door. I'm out here out front. And my brother said, no, there's nobody home. We're on a camping trip. So who was walking around the house? Right? My parents and I, my one brother moved down to Delaware when I was 17. And then a year later, my brother left. But I was the only one who's continuing to see things. There was a time. Uh, there was one time when I was in a band uh, back in the '80s. I had big hair and I had uh, zebra stripe spandex to prove it. You know, I was a drummer, so uh, I came home from a gig and I laid down in bed. And when I did, something laid down next to me. I could feel the the, the bed move, the the pillow move, and this happened three or four times. And I kept rolling over, looking to see what was there, but there was nothing there. When it happened again that fifth time, I rolled over. Whatever was there picked up the blanket and brought it up to the ceiling and then shook it above me. And then it dropped it on top of me. And then after that, for two years, I slept on the couch downstairs because I was scared shitless. I bet. But I, I got used to it. I mean, as I explained to everybody, when you see it as much as I do, it's like when we're kids, you know, and our mom and dad feed us green beans. And then 30 years later, you love green beans. Why? Because you get used to it. What would happen when you would tell people that you see the spirit world and they didn't believe in it? I freaked them the hell out. <laughs> I mean, I had a kid come over to the house one time uh, when I was a kid. He wanted, to, he wanted to experience it for himself. And we were just hanging out in the house and then we were eating some sandwiches in the kitchen and all of a sudden the stereo turned on and it turned up real loud and it freaked them out. He, he just turned white as a ghost and ran out of the house. And I mean, it was funny because... Uh, Every time I'd see him at, at school, he'd be telling everybody that story. But, you know, I'd laugh to myself because I'd never seen – he was whiter than the ghosts, you know. So he was he was like, oh, my God, he's freaking out. He ran out of the freaking house. But um, they – when I would sit, talk to people about this, some people I would tell, they would tell me the same thing, that they would, you know, see some things and stuff like that. But But not to the extent of what I see. But the reaction still, it's just like any other reaction. You hear people talk about ghost stories and stuff like that. But I, I seem to trump everybody and had more ghost stories than anybody else because it just, it, it wasn't that it was sporadic. It was happening to me all the time. My wife is a nurse and she believed that because I'm, because I'm diabetic, maybe the medications I was taking were causing some type of psychosis. 
until about three days afterwards. I mean, she during that time, she didn't know she was going to stick around because she thought I was maybe I was going crazy. But it was three days after she was home, she started seeing some of the same things. And then uh, she realized that this is not, it wasn't just her. It was, I, I, but I believe that that period of time that all that stuff was coming through is they were testing me. They wanted to see if what I was going to do, if I was going to let this scare the crap out of me and You know, or was I going to try to figure it out and try to move forward with it? And that's what I ended up doing. Got a hold of a a priest, uh, tried to get him to come here and do uh, an an exorcism. They don't do that anymore. And besides that, lie. Also, again, that's a bunch of bullshit. This is is their way of, of convincing you that there's a devil in your room. And yeah, no, they can't do anything about it. Because again, the Bible, lie. They're going to use the Bible to put that. Yeah, no, that's a, they they made that Bible up. That's all about control and power and greed. So, uh, I looked online for um, having maybe like a, a paranormal group come to the house, and I found one. That didn't go so well. <laughs> what happened? You know, they they showed up to my house with their van and their a little insignia on the side of the van, and I just thought to myself. I don't want to be this kind of famous in front of everybody here. I just, this is not what you want to do because everyone around my neighborhood is going to think that they have the poltergeist house living next to them. Unfortunately for them, they did. Um, but did these people want to film it? The, oh, they did more than that. They filmed it. They uh, used these little boxes, these little boxes, had wires on them and, and little lights. They put them up all around the doorways. They did all kinds of tests. I mean, when they put those, those boxes up, where's the activity going on in the house? I said, what do you mean, where? I said, it's in the house. It's everywhere in the house. So they said, well, how about in the bedroom? I said, all right, let's go in there. So I walked through the bedroom doorway. And when I did, every one of those boxes lit up. They just lit up. And I turn around and look at those people. And they're just looking at me like, what's going on? And I'm like, I don't know. You're the expert. You tell me, you know. So they walk through the doorway. Nothing happens. They uh, were talking in the bedroom. One guy says, I feel like I should go into that closet. Can we go in there? I said, sure. It's a walk-in closet. I walk in. Within a few seconds, he's getting sick. And he's like, I got to get out of here. I'm, I'm about to throw up. I said, all right. He runs back out. He sits on the bed. I come out. I said, you all right, buddy? He's like, yeah, I feel fine. He says, but uh, how come you're not getting sick? I said, I don't know. That's why I'm here to get you guys to, to figure this out for me. So we walk out of the bedroom. I walk through the bedroom door. They all light up again. They come through. Nothing. And this just happens throughout the whole house. Every time they they were taking pictures of these these digital photos of me walking around the room and with other members of the team. Now, if they took a picture of the other member of the team, there was nothing. But every time I was in the picture, there was 15 or 20 light orbs completely surrounding me. And they're just, they're, the girl's taking a picture. She says to her friend, hey, you got to look at this. And, and I said, what are you looking at? And she says, well, I'm not really supposed to show you, Mr. Jackson, but you really got to see this. I was like, okay. She shows me the pictures. I was like, what's all that? She said, that's spirit. They're all around you. They're not around anybody else but you. I was like, why? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> we we got to figure this out. We do all kinds of tests. We We go down in the basement. We're standing there. I'm talking to them. And there's a, we have this big mirror that was down there against the wall. And I'm standing there talking to this guy. And he, I walk away and he says, hey, Mr. Jackson, can you back here again? I said, yo, what's, what's up? And he says, stand right here. I said, okay. So I stand in front of him. He says, no, peer your head around to the side and take a look at that mirror. I said, okay. And I turn around. The mirror is vibrating. And then I turn back around. He says, now walk away. I walk away and it stops vibrating. And then I stand in front of them again and start vibrating. They do some other tests of yelling out to these things and seeing if, if it'll say anything or do anything. Every time they said something, it responded. We went back upstairs. They wanted to do this one test where it was they were using a spirit box. So they would turn it on and the energy would come into it and it would say words. So they had me lay down in my bed, pretend I was sleeping, had the lights out. They came in, turned it on. 
when they turned it on, it immediately started saying words. It said, Helen, Wendy, Michael, Paul, unique, energy, light, special. And I was just sitting there in my bed laying like, what's going on here? So then they started asking the questions and this went on for 10 minutes. And one of the questions they asked was, are you here to harm Daniel? And then this thing starts speaking that says, no, we are not here to harm Daniel. We love Daniel. We love Daniel's light. Daniel is the light. And I was like, Daniel is the light. What the heck is that supposed to mean? I mean, this is crazy. So they get done their questions after about 10 minutes. They go out. I get up off the bed and go out there. I see them all huddled up. And I said to my wife, I said, what's going on here? She said, I don't know. That's, they're talking about something. So they get done. And they look at me and I said, hey, man. That was crazy, right? I mean, did you get all that stuff and in, in that information? Because the best part about having them there was they were witnessing all this stuff too. They saw everything. And it was that moment, you know, going through all that where I knew, my wife and I knew we weren't crazy because they were witnessing all this stuff. They turned around and they said, you know, yeah, we got all that, Mr. Ed Jackson, but there's a problem. And I said, what do you mean there's a problem? He said, well, whenever we turn that box on, we can get it to spit out a word or two. I said, okay. He said, yeah, but it never says sentences. And I was like, but it did. It said sentences for like 10 minutes. And they said, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> and I was like, but it wasn't anything bad. And they said, no, but it was talking to us. It was a, this was an intelligent conversation going on with someone here. And I was like, okay. And he said, well, we got to figure all this out. And we'll get back to you in a couple of weeks. And I was like, okay, what are we supposed to do then? He said, well, I, I got some prayers you can put on your computer. And, and here, I, I gave me this bottle. And I was like, well, it's a spray bottle. I said, what's in there? He said, oh, holy water. You know what that is? Water, because that's all it does. <laughs> so, and he wanted me to spray around in case something was going to come in here. And he said, we'll, we'll come back in a couple of weeks and uh, we're going to do a big reveal. Of, of everything we have here for you. And I was like, okay. So they leave. Two weeks goes by, three weeks goes by, four, five, six. I was like, what the heck? Nobody's calling. So I, I said to my wife, I said, I'm just going to give him a call and see what's going on. And I get a hold of this guy. I said, so when are you guys coming back? He said, we're not. And I said, what do you mean you're not? He said, I can't get the team together. He said, once we get out on your front lawn, they all quit. No one wants to go back into your house. I said, why not? He said, they're too afraid. And I said, well, can you come back? And he said, I don't feel comfortable coming back to your house. And he said, Mr. Jackson, when we do these hunts, we get information, but we don't get the kind of information we got from your house. What we got from your house usually takes us 10 or 15 homes to get something combined. He said, not just in one place. And I was like, so what am I supposed to do here? He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know how to help you because I don't know where to guide you with us. He said, there's so much going on in your house that I, I really don't know what to tell you to do. And I said, well, great. You're not really helping me, so uh, have a great day. So we also sought out mediums. And then I found five of them. And all five of them didn't know each other. All five of them told me the same story about me. About me, one of them in particular, where I went to her, she she asked me to come to her show because she wanted me to see how she does it. I didn't understand what that meant at the time, but I understand now. We go to the show. I get some tickets. My wife and I go, and I didn't tell this lady I was coming. We walk into the room, and there's like fifty people in there. And this is where it got super strange. I walk in, and she stares at me from across the room. She sees me walk in, locks eyes on me, and watches me and my wife walk all over to our chairs and sit down. And I looked at my wife. My wife's like, that was creepy. I was like, yeah, I don't know what that's about. She said, did you tell her we were going to be here? I said, no, I just bought tickets, you know, so I don't know. She does the show. She explains how she does everything. She reads eight people. She reads me. I'm the second one she reads. She says things about uh, my father. She said uh, a spirit came through. His name was Robert, but he goes by Bob. And 
he wears white T-shirts, but flannel T-shirts, but a business suit most of the time. And the way he passed away was uh, he fell down. And I, she says, does that resonate with anybody? I said, yeah. I said, that's me. I said, that's my dad. The way he th he died was he fell down. He had blunt force trauma. I said, but he wears T-shirts and his name is Bob, but he goes by Robert as well. And she said, well, he showed me a picture of somebody standing there with like medical scrubs on or something and then like prison bars and a school bus. And I said, yeah, that's me. I just went back to school for medical records. And now I work in a prison. She, she said, who's Sarah? And I said, Sarah, you mean my niece? And she said, no, Sarah, who had to make the big decision for your dad to pass away. I said, oh, that's my mom. Her middle name is Sarah. She's the one who had to make the decision to have the plug pulled. So I just knew that this lady was, was legit. So at the end of the show, my wife and I, we went down to talk to her and I, I introduced myself. I said, I'm Daniel Jackson. She said, oh yeah, I talked to you on the phone a couple of weeks ago. I said, yeah. And she said, she said to me like a teacher would, like you were in trouble. She said, I want you to wait till everybody leaves. You and I need to have a talk. And I'm thinking, oh crap, what did I do? <laughs> you know, I mean, it was strange. So everyone left and she said, I know you have an ability to see spirit. I said, I said, lady, you have no idea. I said, I'm seeing so much stuff. And she said, yeah, but there's a reason why you're seeing them. And I said, so many. I was like, yeah, why am I seeing some? She said, because they're coming to you because they see your light. She said, well, I saw you walk into the room. I could feel you on the other side of that door. She said, I see spirit all the time and I see them like they see people. I said, how do you mean? She said, yeah, they, they see your body frame and your light inside of you, but you know, with you, I don't see that. She said, you look like the sun. And I was like, what's that supposed to mean? She said, you look like a beacon of light. She said, and that's why they're coming to you because they believe that you're the light in the heaven. And I said, what am I supposed to do with that? And she said, you have to make a big decision. You need to have a sit down and talk to God and, and see if you're going to move forward with this or not, because this is, she said, I've never seen a light bright, as bright as yours. You, if I close my eyes, you light up this whole room. It's supposed to mean something more, so you need to figure this out. So that's what I did. I ended up going home and talking to my wife about it. And my wife makes sense for a lot of things for me. I said to her, I said, how do I go in there and talk to God? She said, how do you talk to him any other time? You just do. And I said, yeah, okay, I guess. So I went into my bedroom, real dark, and because my wife is a nurse, she slept all day, so we had to keep it dark. So. I went in there and just had a talk with him and, and told him, if this is what you want me to do. If you want me to help these ghosts or spirit or whatever I see, I'll do that. I said, but if you want me to help regular people with whatever I can do, I'll do that too. But I'm going to need your help because I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know where to go and what to do next. Were these spirits looking for help from you? Some of them. They come to me because they want me to cross them over. And I learned how to do that by asking questions. I found out these Wendy, Paul, you know, or actually Wendy, Michael, um, Helen, they were actually my spirit guides who are around me. Everyone has spirit guides around them. You have a man and a woman who's here to help you and guide you through your life. And a man is here with the more helping with more of the masculine decisions and a female with more nurturing type of decisions. But we have decisions go through our minds all the time. We think about things all the time, but we don't act on everything. But they were here to help me guide these spirit where they needed to be. And the th strange thing about it was when spirit would come through and talk to me, no matter who or what was talking to me, I hear it as English. Like if a dog talks to me, I hear it as English. If a cat, if a giraffe, but I hear it as English. And I, I say, do you want to cross over into the light? And they tell me yes. So, so they would ask me questions sometimes. So these spirit guides that I have are archangels. They're not men with wings. They don't have a shield and a sword and all that bull crap. You know, they're not fighting a battle in heaven. I mean, in all actuality, if demons and all that stuff stay in hell, why would they be fighting a battle in heaven? With who? Nobody. So again, it's all contradictions so they can keep you confused. I have these things around me all the time. In the very beginning, it was just these two bright white lights I used to see come up around me. I mean, I, I was seeing them during the day, but I didn't realize I was seeing them during the day. I saw this look like mist or something. If you've ever seen someone smoking a cigarette and the petals of smoke come off a cigarette, I see that around me all the time. I see it when I sit here and stare at you. It's, it's right here all the time. That's them during the day. But at nighttime, I see these bright white light, like bluish white 
things glowing up from the floor. But that's what I saw in the beginning. I don't see that anymore. Do you do readings for people? I do. And that's how I explain it to people because I, because I cross spirit over into the light and they ask me questions. Because they ask me questions and I get answers from archangels. I can ask questions for anybody in the, in the entire world. Because in all actuality, I mean, the archangels are, are connected to everybody, but we're all connected to each other as well. Jesus did not die for your sins. Jesus died for being a free thinker because Jesus was trying to tell everyone that we could all share everything in the world. We could, we could take care of each other. We, we don't have to have money. We could just take care of each other just because. But the people who were in control didn't like that. And who was, who was in control? Kings and queens and religion. Religion doesn't want you to tell, doesn't want to tell you that they are the ones who did what they did to Jesus Christ. They don't want him having a second coming because he would come back and take all their power and greed away from them. It's all a big lie. This is the greatest story ever told. Now they call it the Bible. But he, he came here to show us that we could do all this, but they didn't like it. So what did they do? They put him on a cross. They tortured the shit out of him and murdered him in front of everybody to let everybody know that if you do what he's doing, if you follow what he's doing, we'll do this to you too. So that's why I tell people all the time, why do you want to wear a cross around your neck as a form of punishment? It's not to remind you of what Jesus did for you. It's to remind you of how much power and control they have over you. And we just do it blindly. Because they convinced us we should. It's indoctrination. Yes. And indoctrinated Jesus and God into religion. To change the subject a little bit, have you encountered any people who don't believe in mediums and spirits? Sure. People from the Bible. Here's a good one for you. Bible crap. Okay. It says in Leviticus 19.31, don't speak to anyone who is a medium because that when they're mediums, they talk to demons and devils. Okay. So I always get them on that one. And I say, okay. What about Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost? And they say, what about it? I said, Father and the Son, absolutely. But Holy Ghost, no. And they say, why? I said, well, who's allowed to speak to the Holy Ghost? He speaks to you, correct? Well, yes. Well, then if he's speaking to you and you're responding back, that makes you a medium, correct? And they go, what, what, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? I said, who's the lucky person in your religion? Because if someone is speaking to the Holy Ghost, ghost means spirit. And if you're speaking to spirit, that makes you a medium. But it also says you're not allowed to talk to mediums. So which is it? They don't have an answer for that because it's bullshit. You're not allowed to talk to mediums, but somebody's talking to the Holy Ghost. There is no Holy Ghost because ghosts aren't holy. Nothing is holy. Jesus is not holy. God is not holy. That's Bible. That's religion. That's created by man. Have you ever encountered anyone who said, everything that you're saying is bullshit? How do you respond to them? There are just some people in this world who, who are never going to believe in anything. I do a live show on Facebook once in a while where I let people come in and ask questions. And uh, I have people come in sometimes who try to trick me. They want, they want to prove to everyone else that I'm not who I say I am. But it never works because, again, I get touched on my face for yes and no answers. And what they don't normally know is when they start asking me questions, the first thing I do is ask them. I ask Spirit, are they telling me the truth? I had a woman come in and, and, and say to me she wanted to talk to her brother who had passed away. And I asked my guys, I said, is she telling the truth? And I got no. And I said, oh, she's, so she's asking me a manipulated question to get a different answer so she can challenge you, you know, prove I'm not who I am. And they said, yeah. So she goes on and on about her question. And I said, yeah, I can't answer that question. She so said, oh, I knew it. You're not, be, you're not who you are. Say you are and all this. I said, no, I can't answer the question because your brother's not dead. I said, because you lied to me and told me he's dead, but he isn't dead. He's still alive. But you're asking me that question so you can get your own truth to prove that I'm not who I, I say I am. And she was like, but, but, but. I said, no, no, but, but, but. Is your brother dead? And she said, no. I said, then how would I know that? And she said, you wouldn't. I said, you're right. But I do know that because they told me he's not dead. So get out of my room. Bye-bye. They do it all the time. Now, I will not say that there are not some mediums out there who are a bunch of charlatans, who, who are liars, who just know how to read people. People think when they go into a reading, they're going to get this wow moment. But not everybody gets it all the time, nor or do they get it in the way that they want to get it. Because, you know, if, if anybody comes across a medium and tells, says, hey, I want to talk to my mom and dad, if a medium comes up to you and says, oh, I can get a hold of your mom and dad, they're lying. 
They're full of shit. So just walk away. If your mom and dad do not want to talk to you, they won't. Mm -hmm. Just because you want to. I mean, I had a lady who uh, who had this mother-in-law. Uh, she said, I want to hear a spe secret special message from my mother-in-law. I said, did you have a good relationship with her? She said, oh, yeah. She lived in my house for like 23 years, you know, before she passed. I said, she lived with you for 23 years. Did you have a good relationship? She said, yeah, we talked all the time. So we, we just sat on and talked all day. I said, so you talked to her for 23 years, and you think you need one more fucking message from heaven, from her? Do you think that's going to complete your life? No. She's tired. She, she's done. She's done here. You think she's just going to hang around to tell you one more freaking thing? Are you freaking serious? I said, that's your own ego, lady. Get rid of it and move on with your life. She's not meant to be here, but you are. Figure it out, you know? People just get the, the wildest ideas of, oh, they're waiting around to tell me something. Oh, I, I wanted to tell you that the money's hidden behind the walls. No, it's not. <laughs> they're not waiting to do that because where they are, there is no money. They don't care about that. They, they care about us moving forward, helping as many people as we can, because that's what your purpose is. You're here to help each other just for the sake of helping. Not because you can, but because you should. That's why we're here. It's not about some egotistical story that my, my, my purpose is going to be this big grandiose thing. No, that's your ego. That's, that's your head stuck up your ass. That's what that is. Get it out and pull it out and go out and help people. Daniel, I could listen to you forever. I am so happy to have you as a guest. You'll have to come back. We have oh, to talk more. Okay. Yeah, sure. Tell the audience how they can find you. You said that you have a live Facebook. Uh, I used to do that a lot. We haven't done that in the past couple of months because I was just getting the same people over and over and over again, and no one was asking any more questions. So it was a lot of the same people that I knew back in Delaware who would come on. And, and, and I do miss seeing them because I moved out here to Arizona about a year ago, but I moved down here because... Spirit told me to move out here. So, how can the audience find you? Just from doing these podcasts, I've, I've probably done fifteen or twenty readings for people who have found me on a podcast, which is pretty cool. But uh, if they want to find me for for two reasons, if they want to get a reading with me, uh, I only charge a, it's a if you do a Zoom call, it's a hundred bucks. Uh, if it's a, in person, it's a hundred and twenty bucks. And usually, I want you to plan for at least two to two and a half hours, and it's only a one-time charge. I know mediums who charge four or five hundred bucks an hour. I don't do that because it's not important. It takes my time, but I want to get the information to people. That's what's more important to me. They can find me at www.spiritmediumdaniel.com, and or if they feel as though they have this ability and they need to know how to move forward with it, you can also book a reading for that too, and, and I will I will talk them through it. But I will say, you know, it's not easy being me. Everybody wants the cool part of my gift. They don't want all the stuff that I see or all the things that I have to deal with. So uh, I added a, probably 22 people I've done so far to see if they wanted to move forward with us. Only two of them have. Because once they realize what it takes, then they don't want to move forward with it because it, 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 disrupt, it changes your life completely. So, yeah, they can find me at www.spiritmediumdaniel.com or if they want to watch my I, – I also have a podcast called Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson, me. And um, they can find that at www.beyond-the-veil.com. And, and not only do I um, – we put uh, all the shows we have on there because I have all kinds of guests that come on who are in the same space. But uh, when I do a guest appearance like this – you send me the link, and then we will put it on our – we have a dedicated website for that, so we will put it in the guest spot. So for two reasons. One, so, yeah, people can see a, an interview that I do, but hopefully they, they can find another show to listen to. So, you know, because we're here to help each other. So if we don't, what are we doing? But, uh, yeah, they can find me at, at that site. And if they want to find my book, they can go on Amazon. Is that where you got it from, Amazon? I did, and it arrived today. Yeah, the book, uh, it's entitled Daniel Jackson, The New Beginning, My Awakening as a Spirit Medium. Hey, look at that. All right. This show was wonderful, and I'm <laughs> glad I am getting to know you, and I hope that we can get to know one another even more. Yeah, I'll be on anytime you want to. So that was Spirit Medium Daniel. I thank you for being my guest, and this has been wonderful. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for joining us for Witch Casting with Theodora Pendragon. Have a burning question or have a topic you'd love Theodora and her guests to discuss on the show? Contact her through Instagram at Theodora Pendragon. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And help us spread the word by leaving us a rating and review and sharing it with your friends. See you next time and may your magic always shine. Thank you.